Hello, welcome to Stello's Rap. Oh, oh straight, straight through! through. Bank, take advantage of it. Oh, oh, stand man. and applause! It's a stupid question. <laughs> it's I, not! I have far greater expectations of you than that. Oh, yes! He's gone all the way! Now, he's popular, he's a great leader, he's the mentality of this football team. Oh, and another one from Cleary! Well, it doesn't get much better, does it? Absolutely outstanding! Oh. And the finish is <laughs> just as good! Rugby league, isn't it? Yes, hello and welcome to Sterlo's Wrap. What a treat it is. After a couple of years, I'm jumping off the bench in place of Matt Thompson, who's having a well-earned day off to sit you alongside Peter Sterling. You missed me. It feels like a What's long your time name? since we've done this. What's your name? Bracey, Jay Bracey. Welcome Bracey. back. Welcome back to the Wrap, it's, it's great to be back. We've got a lot to get through today. We're talking origin a little later on. Sure. Uh, we've got our teams and, of course, uh, on top of that, our question of the week from viewers out there on the yeah, interweb. Deep and meaningful. Um, should also point out that halfway mark of the competition, all mm. teams have played 12. So a good time to do a mid-season review, um, which we'll, we might really delve into next week um, because obviously yep. we've got the, the buy round for a number of teams. So we'll have mm. a bit of time there just to assess where everybody is at, uh, at this stage of the season. Well, I thought we'd start with your eels, Peter Sterling. Yeah. Uh, on the... On the okay. five straight wins, then it was now it's been back to back losses. Yes. And not just any losses, they had 28 points put, put on them by Manly this week, 38 points to 20 against the South Sydney Rabbitohs defensively. Where's it going wrong? Well, I, I spoke about it on the Sunday footy show. I'll get to that in a minute. But I, I thought South Sydney started the game really well and mm. didn't allow Parramatta to build their game as they've done so successfully for the bulk of the season. Uh, that, that was a concern. Um, obviously, with everybody back for South Sydney, they were going to be a different proposition to what we'd seen from them in the previous fortnight. Yep. Cameron Murray was back, obviously. Latrell with a game under his belt. So um, you just knew that they were going to be um, a very difficult proposition. I just didn't think that Parramatta handled it, it well at all. And especially defensively. The week before against Manly, our right side defence struggled. And I think it was pretty obvious to everybody um, and, and must have been obvious to Brad, as, Brad Arthur as well because he changed centres. He pushed Wonga Blake over one side and Tom Opacek over to the other side. Now, the point I made on the Sunday footy show, it doesn't matter where you move your troops. If you don't understand what needs to be done in certain situations, the same thing is going to happen. I've just got a couple of clips here. I don't want to get too technical, but these are a couple of movements down the left-hand side. Now, as we, we stop play here, it's basically... The most important thing, firstly, is for the inside defenders to work hard. Now, Nathan Brown and Junior Paulo, that's too, too big a gap. They've got to be pushing out at an angle once they know the ball is going wider, which allows their outside defenders to maintain their width. Now, as play goes on just a little bit further, we stop it there. Now, it is four on four. OK, so Parramatta have got the troops there. If you have a look at the numbers up, Nathan, uh, Ryan Madison is, has got Cody Walker right in front of him. Jacob Arthur gets lost here because Tom Opacek has come up and only has eyes for Cody Walker. You've got to play with peripheral vision. Now, straight away, there's pressure put on Blake Ferguson because he's seen what Tom Opacek has done. But if, if, if Tom Opacek holds and realises that his man is actually the Trell Mitchell coming around the back, he can stay out and maintain his position, Jacob Arthur then takes the decoy man, which is Dane Gagai, and Blake, Ar and, and Blake Ferguson stays out on Alex Johnson. But we go a touch further, stop it there. Jacob Arthur is getting nobody. He's going the same man as, as Tom Opacek is. Blake Ferguson has to come in now because he's, he's completely exposed. And once Latrell Mitchell catches his ball and offloads to Alex Johnson, it's another try. The problem is we see it again exactly here. We, we stay there. Again, they've got to be pushing up harder from the inside to allow their defenders to play out. Opacek has already come up and still only has eyes for where the ball is. You've got to know where your, your attacking play really is. Tom's man is out the back again. He's the decoy runner because Jacob Arthur should be allowed to take Jacob Host coming through. As play continues, we stop it there. Jacob Arthur should be taking Jacob Host Tom Opacek should have stayed out and he would have... It's still two on two, but Opacek is committed. So as play continues, it becomes two on one. It's Groundhog Day. It's Groundhog Day, but it's also Groundhog Day on the last week against Manly. Mm. So it's fine to move your players around, but they've got to understand that, especially when you've got the right amount there, that that can't be 
exposed. And it, what we learned from week to week here in this case, no quick fix here for Brad Arthur, is there? How, how do you how do you turn it around well, on the run mid season? Well, no, I, I think you can turn it around because it's just a matter of sitting down and, and looking at it and getting it in your head as to you know, once you visualise what's needed, mm. I think you can do it. Like these guys are pre- like think they're wonderful players, but they just they they. They basically got in their head, I think, one type of defence, which isn't enough. Again, I made the point on Sunday that you've got to turn the, the sideline into your sometimes your best defender. If you if you number up, eventually the opposition are going to run out of room unless you force them to come back inside, and then they're just going to run into more defenders. Hopefully, anyway. So we don't use Parramatta don't use the sideline enough as a defender. It's all up turn bodies, look at there, but not really aware of what's going on. If we look up here and see, okay, we've got the right numbers, I'll stay out on my man, he's yours, the diggers. And then Blake and whoever can, can stay out on, yep. on their man. It's not a difficult fix, but it's one that you've got to get sorted um, relatively quickly. We're halfway through the year. That's it for still those rap yeah, so, yeah, look, I apologise, but it's it's frustrating. Well, I'm a Parramatta fan. Absolutely. Okay? And I love it when you start calling the we because it just shows how passionate you are about them and wanting them to get it right. Yeah. Well, Souths were very, very good, um, especially yep. after conceding 50 in previous two games. Parramatta have lost two in a row now for the first time, but they're still very, very well placed on the ladder. We haven't lost players to origin. Um, so this game against Newcastle on the weekend mm. is huge for us, That's and it. I'll talk about that in the... The, uh, the preview uh, for, for the Parrot fans later on. OK, uh, let's get to another match. Storm 40 beating the Broncos 12. And one thing I, I love about uh, Melbourne games is afterwards chatting to the players if they've let in some tries that they shouldn't <laughs> have. Scared. They could have won by 60 still. Like, and they are dead set scared. They're scared. It's... Oh, no, <laughs> belly aches going to get us for this. But uh, a couple of things from this game that maybe prove just how scared they are, this Melbourne team, but also what separates them from the rest. I agree. Yep. Look, it, I thought the first 20, 25 minutes of this game, Brisbane were actually the, the better mm. side. But then Melbourne do what they do well. They they hang in. They find a way. Brandon Smith scores a, an individual blockbusting try, and that got things going. Yeah. But I looked at the last five minutes of this game where the scoreline is heavily balanced in their favour. Just watch here, Nelson Asso for Solomona. Jake Turpin comes across, getting ready to kick. Asso for Solomon realises that he can put pressure on. So he bursts out of the line, puts enough pressure on Turpin, who kicks the ball dead. Melbourne get the football at the other end, kick through, look at the chase from Josh Adekar. He holds up his winger, allowing Olam to arrive with to Kamika and force that. This is in the last five minutes. This is when it's easy to sit back mm. and, you know, the kick to go through and we'll all go up together and we'll make a tackle 10 metres out from the line. No, Adekar, Olam, they get down there, they get the football back. Therein just lies a little bit of difference that it doesn't matter whether it's the first five minutes of the game or the last five minutes of the game. The, the Melbourne effort is still the same. Always is. And I don't think it's based on fear. Maybe a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Just a tad. Uh, I tell you what, this is fun to watch uh, in Townsville on the weekend. The Cowboys at a one-point thriller against the Warriors, who still have had their chance. Uh, well, I think it's one that they'll realise that they basically... Well, I know about threw away, because that would be disrespectful to the Cowboys. But mm. you know, the Cowboys got a big lead in this one. Yep. Uh, the Warriors, early in the second half got back into it um, and did really well to do so. But then some little thing, a couple of offloads from Eli Katoa, just untimely, and this from Jazz Tavanga. You know, you've got to know in the climate that this is just unacceptable. It's at a key moment in the game. The pass is well and truly gone. <sighs> there, is, there is no reason for, f- to come up and do that. And Jazz, you know, with all due respect again, he's got a little bit of form. Um, and in that 10 minutes, obviously, Jake Clifford here takes full advantage and puts the kick through, extends the lead from 16 to 6, and all of a sudden, the task is so much tougher. But they get back into it. They, mm-hmm. Things are tied up uh, with two minutes to go. Cohen Hess comes up with this error, and then they put together what I thought was a really poor set of six. Sides, they train to take advantage of looking for, to kick a field goal late in the game. Now, you could have take, taken one here. They opt not to. You know, you, you know that a scrum win is not a bad place to do it. But then they have a couple of shots, not really successfully. But now you've got to be thinking, OK, quick play the ball. Who's in the good position? Who, you know, th- this has all got to be set up yep. before they even arrived at the stadium. But in the end, too much pressure on Harris Tavita here. who pushes it wide of the post. And they, they had a full six tackles inside the 20. You, you've got to nail it. Uh, at the other end... Talking about nailing it, like this, oh. this is still going up from 40 metres out. 
So Valentine Holmes just, he came up with a couple of huge plays late. He Crazy. threw the cutout pass for the hammer to score the, go, the, the try that evened things up. And then he's nailed that one. But I just thought at the other end of the field, the Warriors, they didn't panic, but they just didn't maintain composure to put into operation what they had to have trained for. You've got to train for those scenarios, you know, and, and they got it wrong. And the Cowboys uh, in the eight looking pretty Going good at the well. moment. Uh, they have, of course, uh, said goodbye to Jake Clifford. Uh, he heads down to Newcastle, mm. was there actually to see the Knights uh, win over the Manly Seagulls 18-10 at McDonald Jones Stadium. Do you slot him straight into the team for, for Newcastle against the Eels this weekend? Well, I, look, I don't think they brought him down to sit him on the sideline. Mm. But it'll be interesting because this was Newcastle's best win of the season against a Manly side that had been very, very good in the previous seven or eight weeks. Uh, a complete performance against Parramatta the week earlier. And they got away to a 10-0 lead with... Uh, Newcastle running with a strong wind. Mm. Like it wasn't a breeze, it wasn't a zephyr, it was a strong wind. Um, so for Newcastle to you know, rein that in and then get in front. But I thought uh, this young man, Phoenix Crossland in the 70s, played less than a dozen games. Uh, I, 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 I think it's very hard for him not to be there next week. It's hard to change a losing side. Um, I think Kurt Mann probably hasn't been in, in the best form. So I'm wondering whether Kurt might be the player that they look at utility value, even though they've already got that with Connor Watson, who was the best player on the field in, in this game. But in answer to your question, uh, Brace, I don't think they've brought Jay Clifford down to sit around and watch. Um, maybe this first week they'll use him a little bit differently, but he's going to be in your house. But this young man, uh, I just, I've liked his composure. Uh, he didn't try to overplay his hand. And in the second half, they turned the football over to Manly where they had to. Yep. You know, every time Manly got the footy back, it was 10 metres out from their own line and a long way to go to, you know, to get the points that they needed. And then Crossland was you know, front and centre uh, for, for playing that field position. So interesting. Uh, I thought really good coaching from Adam O'Brien mm. in this game. He got the players he needed out there at the right time. He held back Daniel Saifidi and Mitch Barnett after their initial stint, it was quite a, a break on the side. But when they were needed, and they needed leadership through the middle, he got them back out there. He had all his big men out there. Um, so I, th I saw some really good coaching from Adam O'Brien, who's done it a bit tough of late. And it was a much better press conference for him after this one than so previous weeks. Good to see a smile on, on his dog <laughs> exactly. in the box at uh, McDonald Jones. Panthers 30, Bulldogs 4. Hard fought first half this one, then Penrith went on with it. Still unbeaten this year after 12 matches. Still 88 points they've conceded. 7.33 a game on average. It's, I mean. it's remarkable. It's magnificent. It's all the things that you, you need to win a premiership. And I know we're a long way out, but if you base your, your game, your foundation is your defence, yep. everything else will work. And um, they, were, they were off in the first half, and that's you know, taking nothing away from the Bulldogs, who I thought really played well. You know, they, it should have been 4 0 at half time. Dallin with Tenny Zalesnia came up with the worst pass we've seen all season, and I think we will see all season. 49 seconds to go, he threw it to a player who was going nowhere anyway, and all of a sudden it was, it was 10. But this was in the first half where the Bulldogs had a lot of possession, a lot of field position, and they threw plenty at, at Penrith, and maybe not so mm. um, as effectively as other teams would. Uh, they were a little bit predictable, the Bulldogs, but they kept coming and coming and coming. The scoreline in the end, I thought, flattered Penrith. But what didn't... Um, you know, the, the best part of their game w was the fact that they kept their opposition to four. And even they would be disappointed that Shoup was allowed to run through right at the end of the game to score those only points because they would have, they'd have loved to finish with a duck egg uh, for the opposition. They, they give their opposition nothing uh, in defence, but they give their fans everything in attack, though, the Panthers. Well, the success of your attack comes from your defence. Yep. And it's really well illustrated in this length of the field try where they've kept the opposition out, they force an error, and bang, they react. They, they, they keep coming at you. Matt Burton gets away, finds Toto. Looks like it might break down here, but everybody stays alive. Look at Stephen Crichton. Just, yeah, he's just coasting along at the back. Bang, throws the... I'm filthy if I'm Brian Toto. But, <laughs> but that's, you know, that's... Uh, so many points come from Penrith uh, with the football from what they do without the football. But then they react. We, we keep saying that they are always at you. They are insistent whether they ha have the football or not. And that's what uh, has made them such a, a, an, an irresistible force to be 12-0. It's the best start, I think, 
Uh, only two other teams have, have come up with that start, I think 1995, and then you go back 50 or 60 years. Mm. So they're in rarefied air, but they deserve to be. And, um, but, you know, the test will come now for them, Brace, because mm -hmm. they've got a, a number of origin representatives. And uh, that is both a physically and demanding part of the season, which they are about to uh, try and negotiate. Some other results uh, from the weekend. Roosters 44 over the Raiders 16. Have you put a line quickly through Canberra for 2021? Oh, I, th yeah, I think you have to. Yeah. You know, they, they led 10-0 again in this game. Mm. And when it just got away, it got away. And this is against a Rooster side that, you know, completely under strength. So it's... Yeah, I think the, the cracks are now getting too wide. Uh, Cronulla 38 over the Gold Coast 10. Don't know what's doing with the Titans. All that promise has suddenly gone out the window. Well, they're, they're really good with the football, but their problem all year has been defence. Another 38 points here. Uh, I look that for the Sharks, uh, Sean Johnson, his 200th game was, was tremendous. Uh, Matt Moylan was good as well. Again, puts a little bit of pressure on now as to what they're going to do in the halves. You know, there was talk that Craig Fitzgibbon wanted Adam Reynolds to come across. They haven't got him. Maybe this kind of performance shows that maybe they've already got the six and the seven already within the ranks. Tigers, Dragons, 34-18 to the Tigers. Who did you tip in that one? That was a tipping night. I tipped the Tigers. Did, of course you I did. I tipped the Tigers um, because I think mate Michael Maguire, is, he's got the right solution. Dewey looks looks good in the Doesn't centres. It. Moses Embi looks outstanding in the sixth jersey. Luke Brooks has got a running game going. And I think James Roberts on the wing at this stage of his career, I know he didn't run far for his two tries. Works. But that speed... Um, out wide, I just think it's a real weapon and can be maybe utilised more out on the flank than, than one in in the centres. Uh, you mentioned Origin and the Panthers. Let's get to it. The New South Wales uh, squad named by Brad Fittler on Sunday night ahead of Wednesday week. Origin won and uh, well, the side, it is littered with Panthers in the 17. Uh, you've got four of them. Throw in Appy Corusau as 18th man and then Kurt Capel uh, is over in the Queensland team. But in particular here, the halves, he's gone for the Panthers duo, Nathan Cleary, who was probably the first player chosen, and on debut, Jerome Luai. Well, I don't think that the six and the seven gave Brad Fittler any choice. You know, Jerome Luai comes in. He was part of the squad last year. He wasn't used, but he, he knows the environment, and that's important. But he hasn't just played great football for half a year. He's done it now for a season and a half. So, you know, that combination has just blossomed. And when you watch him every week... Uh, that they understand their roles and they know how to, to get the job done. And I think they can transfer that comfortably into this origin side. I like the New South Wales team because I think whatever, the way that the game is officiated, I think that they've got the right players there. You know, I don't know quite know what origin we're going to see. You know, I, I think that they have to referee it the same as club football because otherwise it loses credibility what the, the game hierarchy is trying to achieve. So that means that you know this is a side that might have might have to defend with 12 players out there mm. for a period of time. There are guys there who've got big motors, who can play big minutes, who've got good leg speed, and who are aggressive. So I think that whatever scenario is thrown at them, they can handle it. Any concerns on Latrell's match fitness? Not at all. Nope. No, nah, not at all. He'll he'll you know at, at fullback you cover more territory than you do in the centre. So if anything, workload's a little bit easier for him to to manage. Um, in that position. So, no, I think he's, he's ready to go. I, I thought it was probably fairly predictable, um, this side. You know, Toto has forced his way in. Uh, Daniel Tupo probably a little bit unlucky to miss out. Uh, the interesting one, Jake Trebojevic being named in the front row. I think this is a, a little bit of an insight as to how Brad Fittler wants to use his interchange bench. I think he wants to finish the game with Jake Trebojevic. He certainly has a plan for the way Paulo and Haas will be used. Again, big, win, big, big men with big motors. I think they'll play big minutes, even though they're coming off the bench. Cameron Murray goes to an edge. He, he's played there before. He'll handle that on his ear. Uh, I feel sorry for Tarek Sims. I, I believe that he would have been in the 17. But uh, welcome, Liam Martin. Uh, congratulations to you and to, to Tarek Sims coming into this side. Yep, so Tyson Frizzell out. Obviously, uh, the big uh, question mark was always going to be uh, what would happen uh, with Victor Radley set to come in. That's a, it's a big loss, but do you feel like that holes field? And, of course, no Angus Crichton too. They've got some cavalry there, the Blues. Uh, I think, if anywhere, I, I know that we don't necessarily have a lot of edge forwards, but we've got players here who can play with. There's a predominance of 13s, aren't there? Isaiah Yeo is a 13 for his club. So too is Cameron Murray. Jake Trebojevic is a, as well. So, um, you know, you've got players who can play that 
ball playing role that J that Victor Radley does so well. Isaiah Yope does that at Penrith. And Jay Trebojevic does it at, at Manly. So, uh, no, look, I think it's well balanced there. Um, Jack Whiten coming in on the bench covers pretty much every position there. Big body, he can come on and, and cause some damage. Um, and again, the, the interesting one is the 18th man in mm -hmm. Appy Coruscant. Uh, a little bit unusual to see a specialist hooker named at 18. Now, if he's activated, it will be interesting to see how that is used. His footwork, his guile, his creativity can, can cause some problems. Um, but unless it's Damien Cook, who may be in the band who is HII'd or whatever, um, it'll be interesting to see how, how Brad Fittler and co uh, utilise Appy Coruscant. But certainly his footwork and his guile could, could cause some problems if he's brought into the game with, with New South Wales into position where they have to bring in that extra player. Can't wait for it all to get underway. Uh, Origin 1 Wednesday week, uh, exclusively live right here on Nine. Question of the week for you, Sterlo. Right. Uh, Sterlo, this is from... Old Fool 666, uh, should we be concerned about how the increased speed of the game is affecting players' footwork? Footwork at the line is vital for a ball carrier to evade head knocks, but is less effective when under fatigue. Yeah, oh, look, I, I think that all aspects defensively, um, you've got to be much more careful now. And, you know, fatigue comes in and all of a sudden, you know, you become more prone to throwing an arm out. So the question is a good one because it, that's certainly an area that, that players have to be aware of. And it's not easy to be aware of something when you are under fatigue because you, you know, you, you're not thinking as well as you are or as clearly as you are when you first go out there. So um, it, it's, look, this we're going through a difficult period here. Um, I think we've seen this weekend that we were better than last weekend and better than the weekend before Magic Round where it, it all kicked off. Um, there are still some guys who need to be more careful Mm -hmm. um, the nipple, the nipple, that's, that's, you've got to think nipple. I was wondering where you're going with that. <laughs> if you're going any higher, you're getting into dangerous territory. Sure. So now, and Victor Radley cops some, uh, copped a bit of um, bad press coming out of, of his hearing saying, I don't have to change my tackling style. Victor doesn't have to change his tackling style. He's just got to, he's got to change his target area. Yep. That's, you know, the great defenders do what Victor does. They get down and they drive up, you know, they boom. But they drive up here. You can't drive up here. So Victor's tackling style is not a problem. It's he's got to lower his target area. That's why I'm thinking nipple. That's right. Now suddenly I'm thinking of Nicholas Ward. Good to have you back, Grace. Here. It's great to be back for a, a little one-hit one to hear. Matthew Thompson will be back in the seat next week. Good luck to him. Thanks, Sterlo. Thanks, mate. Cheers. Great to be back for Sterlo's wrap on the back of round 12 in the National Rugby League.